Press. This week, Communique 168. Well, what do you think of our battle wagon, Mr. Uh... Ralph Tietzoth of the United Press, sir. Yes, of course. I suppose you want to know our general setup here in the Philippine Sea. It would help a lot, Admiral. Well, here it is in a nutshell. We have two fleets in this area. This fleet, the 7th, is now cruising off the west coast of the southern Philippines. It's mainly a battle fleet, isn't it, sir? Haven't seen any carriers. The carriers are concentrated with the 3rd Fleet, just north of us off the central coast of the Philippines. I presume it's covering General MacArthur's landing on the island of Leyte. Correct. While we of the 7th Fleet are on the lookout for the Jap Navy in southern waters. Think they'll come out and fight, Admiral? Anything can happen, Mr. Tietzerth. Anything can happen. <laughs> We cruised through southern Philippine waters until the night of October 21st. I was in the wireless room with one of the captains when suddenly the receiver... Coming in faster. Uh, get the call letters. Yes, sir. C-T-L-R. That's our subfleet in the China Sea. Major Japanese fleet units sighted moving eastward from Singapore towards southern Philippines. We are attacking... We are attacking. Well, gentlemen, they're coming in force. Our submarines have sunk two heavy cruisers and severely damaged a third. Five, three. Yes, but that doesn't mean a thing. There's plenty more of them. Captain. Yes, sir? Send out our scout planes at once for photographs of the enemy's strength. Yes, sir. Now, I want the rest of you officers to check your men and your stations. We've been asking for action. We're going to get it. When the scout planes returned, the admiral again summoned his officers into his cabin for a study of the situation. Well, here are the photographs, gentlemen. Take a look. Yes. It's more serious than I thought. There seems to be not one but two enemy fleets. Precisely. Both are moving in on our positions here in the southern Philippine Sea. Looks like they really mean business this time. No doubt about that, Mr. Tietzorth. The first enemy fleet consists of five battleships, eight cruisers, and 12 destroyers. Their second force has two battleships, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and seven or eight destroyers. We'll certainly need some carrier help from our third fleet. We already have it, Captain. But our job is to guard the Straits of San Bernardino and Surigao. The third fleet will give us air coverage. The rest is up to us. The third fleet gave us plenty of air coverage. The revenge of torpedo planes and hell divers lit into the first Jap force, sinking one light cruiser, setting fire to one battleship, one cruiser, and scoring hits on three other battleships and three heavy cruisers. Turning on the second and smaller enemy fleet, they hit two battleships, three cruisers, and one destroyer. When we received the news by radio, the Admiral said... Good news, all right, Tietzorth. Yes, sir. Excellent news. But don't forget, only one light cruiser was sunk. Both enemy fleets are still moving in on us, in force. Yeah, but don't you think it's strange, Admiral, that Jap planes have failed to attack not only us, but our third fleet to the north? Yes, it is strange. Thank you, Captain. Why, that dirty little... Bad news, Admiral? Japanese land-based planes from the Philippines are attacking the carriers of the third fleet. Thus far, we of the 7th Fleet were out of danger, waiting for the approach of the two enemy fleets. But what of the enemy aerial attack to the north on our 3rd Fleet? The answer wasn't long in coming. 3rd Fleet, aircraft and anti-aircraft, has repulsed enemy aerial attack, shooting down 150 planes. Our losses, one flight carrier. Keep close lookout for approach of enemy fleet. We were congratulating the third fleet's victory when another message came through from the wireless room. Urgent to seventh fleet. Carrier scout planes from third fleet just spotted another enemy battle fleet off northern Philippine coast, steaming southward. Four carriers, two battleships, one heavy cruiser, four light cruisers, six destroyers. That is all. That is all.
Closing in on our 7th and 3rd fleets from three sides, sir. That's right, Captain. The last enemy force apparently intends to deal with the 3rd fleet while the other two enemy units concentrate on us. But we have other plans, Captain. Other plans. And what plans? As the sun went down over the Pacific, the 3rd U.S. fleet sent carriers north for a surprise dawn attack on the newly discovered Jap Sea Force. The rest of its carriers and battle wagons joined us of the 7th U.S. Fleet against the approaching two Jap battle fleets in the south. What is it, Captain? Our scout planes report the first enemy fleet moving through the San Bernardino Straits. The other is approaching the Surigao Straits. Good. Here are your orders. Transmit them to the entire fleet. Yes, sir. We're dividing the 7th Fleet at once according to Plan X. Group 1, together with carriers from the 3rd Fleet, will proceed at once to San Bernardino. Group 2, under my command, will guard the approaches to the Straits of Surigao. That is all, Captain. I accompanied the Admiral on his flagship with other warships to our rendezvous inside the Straits of Surigao. There we lay in wait for the approach of the second Jap fleet. The Admiral said, Well, Tietzoth, here's the plan. Our battle wagons, cruisers, and destroyers, as you can see, are deployed across the straits. It's a nice little ambush, sir. The minute the Japs steam through those straits, we'll give them a rousing reception. Any word from the San Bernardino battle, sir? Not yet. And it worries me. Oh, uh, here you are, Captain. Yes, sir. Order all men on the alert. Send out scout planes. We can expect action soon. Yes, sir. This just came in from the wireless room, sir. Hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Good news? The Japanese First Fleet has been defeated off Samar Island and is now fleeing back through the San Bernardino Straits, losing one cruiser and one destroyer. As the early morning hours ticked away, the tension among the men of the 7th Fleet increased. They knew that their mates had routed the first Jap fleet, and they also knew that their job was yet to be done, to smash the second enemy fleet while the third enemy naval force was dealt with by our third fleet farther north. So we waited there inside the Straits of Surigao. Suddenly at 3.15 a.m., one of the scout planes radioed. Enemy fleet passing through double O. Enemy fleet passing through double O. Have you checked the radar calculations, Captain? Yes, sir. Enemy ships within 11,500 yards. Launch operations at 0,500. All guns manned and ready, sir. Very well. Stand by. Enemy operation completed. They are moving at 22 knots. 22 knots. That is all. What is the target bearing, Captain? Target bearing is now 085, sir. Range? 11,000 yards, sir. Stand by to fire all guns. All stations standing by, sir. Steady. Steady. Fire all guns. Fire all guns! directly into the line of fire of our big guns. We knocked them off one by one like so many sitting ducks as they moved in columns across the Straits of Surigao. After 40 minutes of concentrated fire, all enemy ships had either been sunk or badly damaged. It was victory for the 7th Fleet. And almost at the same moment, the Admiral announced over the PA system. Men, word has just come that the carrier force of the 3rd U.S. Fleet has defeated the enemy the northern Philippine Sea. They are driving him back as we are the first and second Jap fleets in headlong retreat. But we must do more than rout the enemy. We must destroy him. As dawn broke over Surigao Straits, we took up the chase, sinking virtually the remainder of the enemy's first fleet. On the fifth and final day of the Battle of the Philippine Sea, our naval headquarters at Pearl Harbor issued communique number 168. A 
Japanese fleet has been decisively defeated and routed. Two battleships sunk. Four carriers sunk. Six heavy cruisers sunk. Three light cruisers and three small cruisers sunk. Six destroyers sunk. And that's not all. The third and seventh United States fleet severely damaged one enemy battleship, three heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and seven destroyers. Also damaged, but more lightly, were six battleships, four heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, and ten destroyers. Yes, the Japanese fleet submitted itself to the destinies of war and lost. As one American naval officer told me, You can say that the Imperial Japanese fleet is canceled out as a decisive factor in future campaigns. You have been listening to Communique 168, the story of the decisive fleet engagement between the American and Japanese navies, as reported by Ralph Tietzor. Other United Press correspondents are on the world's battlefront ready to flash you the news whenever and wherever it happens. We will present another in this thrilling series, Soldiers of the Press, soon. Be sure to listen. And meanwhile, look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. Listen for United Press news on the air. It is your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.